Welcome back. Almost a month ago, an earthquake shook Indonesia. It's a long way from Maine, but it impacted many who actually live here and many who want to provide disaster relief. Joining us is one of those Mainers who provided disaster relief. His name is Darcy Pierce. When you tweeted me about the fact that you were there in Indonesia, I, my stomach kind of did a turn. Um, tell us what it was like when you hit the ground. Well, it, it was a lot of disaster. There was a lot of uh, damage to buildings. They had all uh, collapsed and people really didn't have a place to live. They didn't have a place to uh, have any shelter. So that was the obvious thing that you saw right out of the gate. Um, you then realized that the people were almost still in a state of shock. They really weren't sure exactly how they were going to move forward. They didn't have the resources to do that. And so that was kind of our job to go in there and, and help them with that to find ways to, to resolve the issues. You, we should mention you were there as a consultant for an international organization that's based in Phoenix. It's called Food for the Hungry. That's correct. They're a disaster relief organization, but you also work um, with the United States government, with the Indonesian government in, in assessing what the needs are and how the two governments can work together as well as the agencies who are trying to provide the relief. That's correct. Um, Food for the Hungry has a, a, a development program over there in Indonesia already. And so what they asked me to go over and do was to be able to assess the situation on the ground and be able to come up with what the Indonesian government wanted and combine that with what the U.S. government was willing to do and find a context where we could bring that together and be able to help the people. You, you're the president of your own company, Pierce International in Scarborough. These, this is a pretty high level <laughs> to reach. Well, you know, I've been doing this for, for a number of years, uh, probably about 10 years in the relief and development industry. And uh, just after a while, I guess you tend to uh, be put in those situations and you've seen a, a, a lot of different uh, disasters and, and things that have happened around the world. And, and after a while, I guess the expertise is valuable. Now, a lot of us n noticed it is really the word I would use, the, the earthquake on television or in news reports. But after a few days, it, it kind of subsides. You were over there for two weeks. And, and while you were there, you were called to the Philippines as well, where there was a typhoon. Tell us about that. The flooding in the Philippines, I think, got a little bit more attention. Uh, it was a very visually impactful uh, disaster, and so I think the news media was able to really uh, do more with that. But uh, And the footage we're seeing is footage you took with your iPhone. Yes, yes. And, it, and you were telling me one of the things is the smell. The smell is really powerful. Uh, you can't capture that with a, with a video, uh, but especially in the Philippines where it was flooding, uh, you had mud that was four and five feet deep. And in that mud, they were trying to clean it out of their homes. And as they cleaned it out of their homes, of course, the sewage goes into that. There are dead animals and even dead bodies that all get mixed up in that. And so until that's able to be removed from the cities, the, uh, the odor is significant. Pretty intense for you to go from, from Maine, where we have a pretty cushy life, to, to these circumstances. This is not the first time, we should say, that you've worked in this capacity. You were also involved with the tsunami. Yes, in uh, 2005 I was over in Thailand and we went through uh, the area of Phuket. One of uh, the staff of Food for the Hungry was lost there in that and so we had to spend several days searching for her body. Uh, we weren't able to find it. It ended up being I think about two or three months later that they eventually found her body. You said that it's difficult to compare the two but one is very emotional, the tsunami, the other is more physical in terms of the earthquake and the flooding in, in Philippines. Yeah, the, the Indonesia and the Philippines response was, was a lot more physical. It was physical damage. The death toll was nothing like it was in the tsunami. But in the tsunami, the visually impacting piece there was the piles of bodies and caskets and, and how those all were being uh, dealt with. In, in one case, um, the, the bodies that of the Thai people were placed on the ground, but the foreigners were put into uh, refrigerated compartments. And so it, it really sent a, a very difficult message to the local people. Well, Darcy, thank you for your work. Thank you mm -hmm. for everything that you do. Um, and thank you for, for being willing to share it with us. And for more information on Darcy Pierce's company, Pierce International in Scarborough, there's a link in the 207 section of our websites, as well as a link for Fe Food for the Hungry, the international relief organization that Darcy 
is a consultant for. And we will be back with more of 207. 7 groups of wolves were set free in different parts of the park. A perfectly ordinary day at Drown Road Elementary School in Cumberland where the third graders are learning about wolves. Grizzly bears are much bigger than wolves. Oliver Wallstrom is concentrating on his drawing, coloring in pictures with a crayon. He's 9 years old and good with a crayon, but you ought to see what he can do with a hockey stick. His father says Oliver began skating when he...